Hi, welcome back. We are cloning Pop the Law game, and this will be the last episode in this series where we'll just finish the entire game. And if you have missed the older episodes, please go and watch all of them. And I have some more clone ideas which I want to do it with Unity, so please subscribe if you like. So today, let's polish the game a bit. Now, the next thing I want to add in the game is the ability to increase the game speed as the game progresses. So when the player clears the level, I want to increment the motor speed a bit. And this feature is pretty simple. We can start by adding a new public method to increase and decrease the motor speed. And inside this, we'll just add a two hour speed by the given value. And of course, we'll add some sanity checks so I don't accidentally pass a wrong value. And I'll just do the same for reduce speed. Now we can go in the inspector and add a new event listener that will listen for the level cleared event. And when that event happens, we'll just increase the paddle speed by, let's say, 5. And we'll also listen for the dot missed event. And in this case, we'll just reduce the speed by maybe 2. So if the player loses, we'll just give them some slack and make the game easier. But also, this doesn't mean that the speed can increase indefinitely. So I'll also add a max speed value. And in the increased speed, I'll make sure that the new speed never goes above the max speed. We should also do the same thing for the reduce speed. So I'll add a new variable for minimum speed and also in the reduce speed method. Uh, we just take the mathf max method that makes sure that we never reduce below the minimum speed. Let me reset the data and let's test. So when the level is cleared, you can see that the speed increases. So the game gets tougher as the player progresses. And the speed is also clamped to a max speed, so it doesn't go above that. Okay, the next thing to do is to make the dot spawn angle configurable. So currently it's a it's hard coded value and we should move these two variables to maybe game data. So in the game data, let's add two new variables for minimum spawn angle and maximum spawn angle. And then back in the dot spawner, I'll just use those instead. I'm thinking the motor speed and these min and max speed value should also be kept in the game data instead of the motor. So I'll just add these new variables in the game data as well and then in the anchor motor i'll just replace all my speed variables by the game data variable and these increase and reduce methods now directly change the game data's current motor speed not the most ideal code but I think it's fine and now we have all the data inside our game data class and let's test to see if we didn't break anything yeah you can see that the speed is increasing in the game data and also when you lose the speed reduces as well uh, everything seems to be fine let's now do some refactoring and cleanup I think this increase and decrease speed method should be placed inside the game data let's move them there and change and maybe rename them properly. And now we can just say current motor speed instead of game data. Now our listeners in the paddle are broken because there is no method anymore. So let's remove them and put new listeners on the game manager instead. Add a new listener to listen for level cleared. And here in the response, just drop the game data asset itself. One interesting thing here is that you can drop a scriptable object instance as well, not just a game object. 
and I'll choose the increase speed method here and add a new listener on the dot missed as well doing the opposite thing. And we can even remove this stop method from the game manager and move it to the game data. Now our manager is really small. And here in the listener, we just drop the game data instead of manager and choose the stop game method. And we can also remove this redundant on win event variable because we are not using that anymore. And when I reset the game, the motor speed should reset back to the minimum speed. So let's do that in the reset data method. So this all looks okay. Maybe move this dot spawner and the dot to a new folder. Okay, one thing we can uh, try to fix is this text, which kind of looks too big on smaller screen size. So let's try to reset the anchors and make sure it never covers our lock. Auto sizing in text mesh pro can help too. I'll also make the level and the star UI auto size. that's good enough. Let's now add some animations to this hint text. So let's create a new animation for this and change the scale of text a bit with time. So it looks like popping out a bit. Let's also rename the animation to scale up because that's what we are doing. Uh, let's add one more small effect that will look cool. So I want the level text to pop out a bit when we clear the level. So I'll add a new animator to this UI and create a new animation, say level text animation. And let's hit record and we'll use the rec transform scale property and scale it up a bit and then back down. And I want this to happen quickly. And remove the loop from animation. Now we don't want this animation to run all by default. I wanna trigger this when the level clear event is raised. So add a new event listener to this object and listen for the level cleared and then drop the same object and choose animator set trigger. And let's just trigger something called do animation. Now I can just go and create an idle state and a transition to this animation using a trigger. So let's add this uh, do animation trigger and set this as the condition. And also set the return transition and adjust the transition time a bit. Now we can raise this trigger and animate our text. So in the game, let's raise the level cleared event. And yeah, you can see that the UI is popping out, indicating that the player has cleared the level. Maybe tweak the animation a bit to delay it down. I'll just add a slight pause so it looks good. And of course you can tweak this as much as you like. The original Pop The Log game also has these uh, power-ups, uh, these random star dots in the game that just gives you one star and, and you can use these in the store to buy some things. So let's add this star dot now. I'll duplicate the dot prefab and call this one star dot. So let's add a new component on this called star and move the script back to our folder. 
and in the dot detector code while we are detecting the dot we can check if the dot has the star component and if it does then we'll just increment our stars count in the game data now as for spawning this new star dot inside our dot spawner we can add a new game object variable called star dot prefab and then we can have a small method called select random dot that just returns a star dot prefab 20% of the time and other time it just returns the normal one and this random value always returns a value between 0 and 1 and here in the spawn method instead of dot prefab we can just call our method to get the dot uh, let's just recolor the sprite on this star uh, one to test and let's drop this new star prefab in the star dot prefab field and play and now we have random star dots 20 percent of the time and our stars count also increases when we pick them up uh, let's also make a new sprite for the star dot i'm gonna reorganize my art asset a bit move them along with other stuff so I'll just go back to Illustrator and I'll copy my existing dot and use the star tool to create a star in the center. And now just export this and put it back in the game. And set the pixel setting the same as the simple dot. So I'll drop it to make sure it looks okay and then just replace the sprite on the star dot. And there you have it, star dots in the game. And this is where we'll close the project. Although there is still a lot to do like the menus and settings, but I feel like the current state of the game is good enough. So, so let's just stop here. And thanks a lot for joining me on this. We actually came pretty far. We made the art assets. We implemented all this paddle and dot logic and we did all these cool sliding animations. And we also learned how to use events in games. So I hope you enjoyed this series. I hope you learned something new. I'm working on more game clones uh, project like these, uh, which I'll be posting soon. So please subscribe and keep making games. I'll see you next time. Cheers.